Before we get started, I want you to enjoy this piece of nostalgia behind me before we get into the game. <laughs> Hungry Hungry Hippos. First to gobble up the most marbles wins. Hungry Hungry Hippos. We're Hungry Hungry Hippos. We love to feed our Well, doesn't that game bring back memories? Hungry Hippo with the marbles flying around and the kids screaming in the house. Uh, my kids had that game. My name is Harry Jacobs and I am the North of 60 Gamer and welcome. And today we have the opportunity to bring to you a brand new Kickstarter, which is on the campaign trail as of today, October 20th. So please, let's go down and have a look at Hamsters versus Hippos. Okay, we're down at the table and we're looking at Hamsters versus Hippos. Uh, first, let me say that I did get this copy from free from uh, Tin Robot Games to look at. I did not ask for payment and therefore what you're going to hear is my opinion and what I think about the game. And so far, though, let's take a look. Uh, everything reads well. It looks like a family game. It looks like a fun game that you can play with your grandchildren. Uh, it says uh, one to six players. It says 14 and up, but inside there's a bit of a difference. 14 and up and eight plus. So this is a prototype i'm going to go along with the uh, rules having looked at the rules already i would say it's eight and up not 14 plus it's a simple tile a game where you're going to set up your tiles you're going to put your lotuses down you're going to follow what is on the tiles and collect as many points and it's a push your luck game and you're going to pull your hamster off before you lose all your points because if you hit a hippo you're going to lose all your points and you can see the rules are quite light. I think as a parent or a grandparent, I would be able to teach this to my uh, grandkids and they would love it. Or, and then here's your two boards. You have two to four or five to six. There's also a solo play as well. I think what we'll cover it is probably from a two player or a four player perspective, but we might look at the solo. Each tile is slightly different. There's uh, a number of tiles, each have icons on it. And we will show you this a little closer when we uh, get into the game. But what's going to happen is these tiles are going to be laid upside down and here they are here. And on the flip side, there's different things like there's this resting hamster and it says peek, peek under an adjacent card for free. So you could, if you were like this, you could go, hey, what's on this one? Oh, another sleeping one. Um, you have hamsters in water, hamsters running across, which is Return one point from what you have collected this round back to the general supply. So it's like losing a point. And if you come across these lotuses, you'll uh, actually gain, in this case, two points. So you're going to gain points through the game with these nice little tiles. There's lots of tiles. So you're going to have a very replay. And there's also, you add a number of hippos to your tiles and you're going to get laid out if you hit a hippo <laughs> he eats your hamster which is unfortunate but as far as i know hippos are really vegetarian so why would they would eat a hamster got me these are your lotuses so these are they fit on top of your lilies and you'll take them for points some of them as you can see in the rules that they get preset and there's a little bowl to hold them all in all this is a great little prototype i looks like a great little family game uh, or a fun filler. If you're, you know, in a, a gaming cafe, this looks like a great little family filler. Looks like if I was at my club, I would I'd certainly bring this out while we're waiting for somebody to set up something bigger just very quick. There's a lot of people who like these lightweight games, and they're a lot of fun. But this is Hamsters versus, I said Hamsters and Hippos. This is Hamsters versus Hippos. So I've laid out the components that we're going to be playing with for a round. We are going to simulate a single round of play of hamster versus hippos. We are going to play our three players. And as you can see, we have the blue, the red, and the yellow player. I have taken two of the four hippos out of this stack of tiles. What we're going to do is we're going to mix up the tiles and we're going to set up a three player game, which is played on a five by five grid with a number of single point lily pads in the middle. So I'm going to set that up and, and then we'll be right back. 
And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the tiles and I'm going to put them into the box top. And I'm going to swirl them around. And give them a good mix. There, don't forget, there are two hippo tiles. So it doesn't necessarily mean we're even going to get hippo tiles in this. But if we do get a hippo tile, you immediately end the round for that person. If any time there's two hippos exposed, the game is immediately over. And we'll just put these off to the side for the time being. And we'll start. So I'm going to build the, uh, the lily pads. Trying to get a really good mix here of, of tiles. Though they were pretty mixed up the last practice round I did, so we should be okay. There's no guarantee there's a hippo in these. That is one thing you never know is what is lurk lurking, and we need one more row here. Mm, I like tile laying games myself. I, I think there's a certain allure to them. A certain simplicity that makes uh, things easier to play and easier to understand. And we're just going to put the lily pads out. Whoops. Going a little crazy here. They go in the center, just like this. And one more. And that is the uh, setup for the game. It's as simple as that. You saw it right here. Uh, took less than a minute or two to set this up. And what's going to happen is, what we're going to do is we're going to just... Close our eyes and let one of these drop, and it's the blue player. So the blue player is going to go first, then red, and then the yellow. So, because we're going to simulate this, so it'll be blue, yellow, red. So we'll do this, blue, yellow, red, just so we know that the blue player is going first. Now, the blue player, regardless of the orientation of the table, you, can, you must ent enter on a, a square that is on the perimeter. And so you can go anywhere you want along that perimeter. You can take two actions. So the two actions that you've been generally going to take is a move and a move. And you're going to move, you're going to turn over the tile, then you're going to do the action, and then you're going to move over, uh, try, move another tile. So you're basically going to get two moves. Unless you decide to take your uh, hamster off because you want to save those points. So you don't actually get the points until you actually pull your hamster off. You just collect them in your pouch and then you go back to your starting lily pad. So blue is ready to go. Blue is going to start in the corner here and it's going to go blue, yellow, red. The blue hamster pulls this over and there is a yellow lily pad here. He can take up to two movements uh, or he can pull it off. So he can move, move, or move, pull off, or just pull off. And then he's going to move into the center closer so he can pull that lily out. He gets the lily pad off of there, and he gets a hippo. So what happens when you get a hippo? You are out, and he loses his mark. And that is unfortunate. Right off the bat, the blue player is gone. Yellow and red take a, a sigh, of, a collective sigh of relief, <laughs> because they know at least there's one more out here, and a good chance that we may not get it. He says, you know what, I'm going to start right here at the bottom. And the first thing he does is get a lily. And then he's going to move here. He picks up that lily. Now you don't actually put the lilies on your player board. Now that's a splash when you can see him in the water. That's like him going, oh, I slipped off, I'm done. Red says, boy, whew, he needs a piece of this action. Um, chances are there are, he's going to start here. Right next to that hippo. And he, he picks up a single as well. And he's going to move closer to the center because he thinks, ah, oh, there's no hippo here because the hippo's in the other space. He picks up two. We come back to yellow. Uh, yellow. Yellow thinks he's going to go here. He thinks maybe I can see if I can block him off. Aha, so yellow has a peak. And if you look at him, he's laying down, peeking under the lily pad. So he's here. He's going to take this for his yellow. And he says, ah, let me peek over here. <gasps> hmm. 
And he says, yes, I'm going to go over here because I really don't want to take, give Red the opportunity to uh, pick up those points because he can pick up an extra point there. As you can see, we are now Red. Now, Red is going to move into the center because he's going to try to block off Yellow a little bit. And that is a lily pad, which basically is nothing. And then he's going to come, if he comes over to here, he's pretty much stuck to this bottom of the, of the board. So he's going to come one, one more over to here. And hopefully it's not a hippo. It is a lily pad that allows to move a lily from an adjacent square closer to him. But he only has the one and he, he's okay. Yellow is kind of stuck now. If he goes down here, he could start working his way along. Because yellow here, red is pretty much cut off. So red, yellow says, yep, this sounds like a good move. I'm not ready to push my luck. And he picks a three-pointer. And then moves next door. And that is a giant hop. Unfortunately, he has nowhere to hop to at this point because it's two. So he's got nowhere to go and that pretty well will end his game because he has no movements left. You must, it doesn't say a May condition. Let me just see, spring, you fell, nope, spring, spring, spring. You, your next move must be to a lily pad that is two lilies away orthogonally or diagonally. One, two, one, two, and he doesn't. So his turn is done. So basically yellow is out of the game. Red is going to come over to here. Now he can move a lily pad from an adjacent, but there's nothing adjacent to him. And he's going to come down here, and that is just a lily pad. Yellow is done. One, two, three, four, five, eight points. Now the question for the red becomes, does he push his luck? Or does he stop? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has seven. The only way to go is here. So he says, I'm pushing my luck. He can peek. This is good. Up. Oh, so he goes here. Ends his turn. His next turn. He can spring. He's got nowhere to go. He is done. He pulls over seven. And that is the end of the round. What happens at the end of the round basically is that we will put our tiles back into the box. We will mix them up. We will add another hippo. We will set up another five by five grid with the lilies in the middle and we'll do exactly the same thing. Hopefully blue won't have as bad a luck as he did here. And that is how you play hamsters versus hippos. So let's go up uh, for some final thoughts. So some final thoughts. Hamsters versus Hippos, 10 robot games, 1 to 6 players, 8 plus and 15 to 30 minutes. I think that's a good estimate. You will play that over 4 rounds. This game is a lot of fun. If you have an 8 year old who you'd like to get into a board game, a more modern style board game, this game would be a certainly a great entry level game along with some many other games that is specifically for, I would say, family. So this is a fun family orientated game that you can play at the table with your kids or grandkids in my case. Certainly this would be a game that I would consider giving to my grandkids uh, at Christmas time or for a birthday. I have been trying to give them games uh, on, their, on their birthdays and Christmas times to try to sort of give them an interest of, of some different games that you can play other than some of the traditional games they played as a kid. And they certainly like those games like Uno and uh, Sorry are their two favorite games, uh, mainly because it, there's a lot of take that and they really like to do that. There's a little take that in there where you can steal a uh, lily pad. This is a push your luck game. It's an easy tile away game. You, you can learn the iconology very, very quickly through a, a quick play and you'll never even refer back to the rules again. All in all, they did a bang up job here with this game. I highly recommend it. I think it's one of the best children's games to come out in a long while. 
I think it's one of the best family games to come out in a long while with a market that is saturated towards the sort of adults and tons of stuff in a box. This gives you a great game in a small footprint box. Take it on a trip. Go camping with it. Take it to Grandpa and make him play it. So this is Harry Jacobs, and I am the North of 60 Gamer. I thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, and hit the notifications. I really would love to have you as part of my community. I appreciate you being here today, and I hope you really enjoyed this game as much as I do. Please go out and back it on Kickstarter. I will put the link down in the comments and support this uh, game. There's a lot of independent gamers who are being overshadowed by some big games. Pa don't pass up on this game because uh, the price I imagine is because the price is right and I will put the price down uh, below here uh, when I so that you can see what the price is. So thank you very much and we will talk to you later. Please go out and enjoy a nice gaming day.